The Taliban's swift return to power has shocked the world and humiliated America. It marks the end of a 20-year campaign which has highlighted America's failures in military planning, intelligence and nation-building. Above all, it has shown America failing to protect those it has sworn to defend. It's the right and the responsibility of Afghan people alone to decide their future. This did unfold more quickly than we had anticipated. How will this damage America's long-term global standing and the future security of the world? Our experts answer your questions. How did the Afghan government and army collapse so easily? I think the ultimate reason the Afghan army collapsed so spectacularly in the early weeks of August was that it wasn't outfought by the Taliban on the battlefield militarily. It was effectively outwitted. The Taliban turned up to local areas and said to local militia leaders and Afghan troops, look, you can either fight for the Afghan state that is going to be abandoned by the Americans in a few weeks, or you can give up now and save your families, save your lives, and we'll give you free passage. And it did that in district by district, flipping individual Afghan brigades and battalions. So, yeah, it was extraordinarily um, deft on the part of the Taliban and extraordinary incompetence on the part of the Americans of not seeing this coming. I mean, we... You know, we've we had conversations with very senior uh, American government officials only a few days before this happened, where they were saying, no, there's absolutely no chance of that happening. It'll be fine. The government will, 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 will be, you know, remain in charge. And they just didn't know what they were talking about. Why was America in Afghanistan in the first place? America went into Afghanistan in the first place because uh, Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda, the uh, the group that carried out the uh, terrorist attacks on New York and, and Washington of September the 11th, 2001, uh, were being sheltered by the, the Taliban government there. And they, they went in to uh, drive uh, al-Qaeda out of uh, Afghanistan. And in the process, they uh, overthrew the Afghan government. And that happened incredibly quickly. Uh, and then they weren't quite sure what to do next. And that was when the sort of the mission creep came in. You know, how do you get out? What? How do you establish um, a non-terrible or less terrible uh, government in Afghanistan that won't harbor terrorists again? Um, and that turned out to be extremely difficult. It was very easy to overthrow uh, the, the Taliban, uh, but it was extremely hard to turn uh, Afghanistan into um, a a democracy of any kind, uh, let alone a, a well-run one. And they've spent sort of 20 years trying to figure out how to do that um, with, as we can see now, uh, very little success. Why was America unable to create a functioning government in Afghanistan? America struggled to create a functioning government in Afghanistan for lots of reasons. One of those reasons, I think, is that what happened very early on in the invasion in the two, early 2000s was that it created a highly centralised Afghan state. Lots of power was vested in Kabul. It essentially disenfranchised lots of power brokers in Afghanistan who for, for, for decades had enormous amounts of power. Communities in the north of Afghanistan, on the fringes near key border towns, uh, and the, 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 the power of tribe was very, very important here. You know, tribes that had long held key border crossings that were very important felt disenfranchised by a central government that had accumulated power for itself. That's one reason I think the Taliban was able to flip so many of these areas so quickly in the last month or so. The Americans, you know, they could they could paper over a lot because it's a superpower and they did have uh, militarily the power to hold the Taliban off for as long as they chose to. Um, and they did have enough money to, to keep the state functioning. But to make it able to function without any help at all, that was a very long-term project um, and one that ultimately uh, Donald Trump and Joe Biden decided they didn't wish to pursue. So they pulled the plug with the disastrous consequences that we've just seen. Why is the Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan so humiliating for America? There are lots of people, I think, in the United States and elsewhere who thought it was perhaps the right time for America to leave Afghanistan. But 
the the manner in which it was done, the haste with which it was conducted, the betrayal of lots of Afghan allies, the sense that America was fixated and, and entirely focused on evacuating its nationals rather than helping those who had fought alongside it for 20 years, that that said something um, very damaging about America's character and America's policy. There was a point where you could have said that um, a sort of slapdash America first foreign policy was just um, a temporary blip because Donald Trump was in charge. But this was taking place under a democratic president who prided himself uh, on his foreign policy knowledge. And he turned out to be no better uh, in this case than his predecessor, possibly worse. That's, That's a huge problem for America's image, at least in in, in the short run. And that's going to affect its ability to deter its enemies and reassure its, its allies and friends. What type of government will the Taliban form and how will they govern? The Taliban say they want an open, inclusive Islamic government. I suspect the emphasis will be on the third of those and not very much on the first two of those. They want to keep the international community on side. They want to present a different image to the world of a less brutal, harsh force, uh, uh, one that they say has reformed. And I think they want to keep the aid flowing. They want to uh, ensure that they don't provoke a backlash to their rule straight away. So they've made all the right noises. But I think it's worth being very clear eyed about this Uh, in areas that were under their control in the past. And this is this is well documented by organizations like Human Rights Watch, the NGO. uh, Girls education was extremely limited uh, and we saw lots of the same curbs on art, on media, on music, uh, on free expression, on religious freedom, uh, on personal liberties that we did under their previous emirate or previous government in the 1990s. But I don't think that the the fundamental Uh, ideological cast of the movement has changed very much at all. Uh, Even just very recently in the areas that they've taken over, we have seen them going into workplaces, telling women, you must go home, never come back again. And uh, why don't you get your male relatives to come and take your jobs? They've been knocking on people's doors and saying, if there are any single women in this household, they must come out now. And they say, marry a, a Taliban fighter. That's how they see that. That is what they consider to be justice. That's what they consider to be the appropriate way of running a society. And it's possible that they may moderate that slightly uh, in the cities. But uh, it's pretty clear what direction the country is going in. Uh, the question is how far it moves in that direction. And um, I think the scenes of people risking their lives to try to get out suggests what Afghans think is going to happen. Is Biden to blame for this failure in Afghanistan? Joe Biden deserves responsibility for the manner of withdrawal and, of course, the decision to pull America completely out today. There's no doubt about that. He himself said in his press conference he he didn't want to hand this this responsibility on to a fifth American president. But I think it's also worth knowing that lots of presidents have contributed to this mess, not just not just Biden in sort of delivering the final uh, decision. Donald Trump signed a a rather flawed agreement with the Taliban in which he effectively agreed to pull all American troops out by May 1st of this year in exchange for very little. But even going before that, we saw George W. Bush initiate the Iraq war, which distracted from the Afghan campaign. Um, And we saw Barack Obama, who also had a rather substantial surge of American forces in 2010 or so, which also failed. So in some ways, every American president has tried their hand at this problem. They've all made various mistakes. But of course, it is Joe Biden who will be associated with the um, with the final withdrawal and the chaos that accompanied it. How will the Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan affect the world? What I think we're likely to see now, and we've seen hints of in the chaos at Kabul airport, is Afghans desperate to leave the country. There's going to be substantial refugee flows um, uh, already internally away from provincial towns towards Kabul. Kabul is full of refugees and out of Afghanistan towards neighbouring areas, Iran, Central Asia, Pakistan. 
That will have serious consequences for those countries, which may not be in great shape to take more Afghan refugees. But I think it will also affect Europe. So, you know, apart from the risk of a resurgent Al Qaeda, uh, resurgent militancy, the ideological effects of all of that, I think refugees are going to be uh, perhaps one of the most important legacies of the military uh, events that we've seen in the past few days. I'm Robert Guest, the foreign editor of The Economist. If you'd like to read more of our Afghanistan coverage, please click on the link. Thank you very much for watching.